Sunt veni și ale zile. Veni ție, iar răspunde, nu știu ce. Îl veni? Veni ție, iar răspunde. Veni ție, iar The first thing is the one of murder. So you don't definitely have to take a knife or a gun and shoot the person or stab the person in the head. But the mere fact that you are angry with somebody and are not willing to forgive is a sin in the eyes of God. Who of you are bad feelings for somebody at this particular moment? You may be sitting in church, eh? So, if you're not putting up your hand and there is something going on, I watch you. Is there anybody? Yes. Most of us? Like they say in Africans in the Catholic community, they like, are you a Okay? And if you're not prepared to be that person, if you're not prepared to go and be an assignment to that person, you are an enemy to the Lord. That's very challenging, isn't it? Now, a lot of people say, yeah, I'm not really. But what about racism? about adultery in the mind. You go to the beach or you go to the swimming pool and you see this beautiful woman in a big nuts. <laughs> what goes through the mind? Or you see a guy you see a guy there with his muscles rubbing and he's got a six pack and a Do these thoughts go through your mind? Satan is there. He's waiting for you. And when he sees these things happening, he puts it in your mind and says, okay, I'd love to obey you. Can you see the sun to Satan? Can you see how he can corrupt us? Just by thought. But if we are listeners and readers and followers of the word of God, we will be able to say to Satan, wait, Satan. Get away from me, Satan. And ask God to put pure thoughts into your mind. I once spoke to my father from this and I confessed this to him. And he said to me, Think about this, think about it. what a beautiful creation that God has made in that beautiful woman. Oh, if I was a woman, he would have said, Oh. How beautiful that guy is to get up this morning and what is allowing him to, to look the way he does. But the owner 
scrutinize on us and what we allow the thoughts to go through our minds. So it's not only the physical thing of having an adulterous relationship with someone, but the main thought that that development is also a sin. Then there's the case of divorce. And they speak about people who are being divorced. That they should only divorce one another in the case of sexual immorality. I need to think about that very really carefully. Because when a person gets married, the moment you marry them, you see, only one, two, three, four, five people, six people are married. The rest of you are not married. Right? The vows that you make at the altar when you get married are those vows binding. Because they say, Father McBride married me. Uh, I didn't. God did. I was merely the tool that God used to bring this about. And we make oaths say, for better or for for better or for worse. Now, is there other words like worse, worse, and worse? Or is worse the worse of the worst? Is it? Why are people not answering? <laughs> so we need to consider what can there be that be worse in your marriage life? One has to think about these things and the promises that we make to God. At baptism, people make promises to God. Do they keep it? I have a big thing about God payments. I've got a big thing about that. Whose child, whose will you? Who's the mother and the father of your children? You are and the last one. Right? So, isn't that God's gift to you? Which makes you that child's God's parents. Am I right? Because God has given you those children, so you are God's parents to that child. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, I must tell you this. I was already ordained priest and I was the priest in the um, Rebellion or was it Monday? And the guy came up to me and he said, Good morning, Father. This was after the mass. Good morning, Father. He said, Good morning, Father. Good morning, Father.
Like if you see guy or you are in the next station that you come, that that person will see your child's education, send you to university, counseling you in the ways of the Lord, and all those kinds of things written down on paper. And he must sign it, because it's a legal document. How many people do you think will sign that document? Because it's a heck of a responsibility on that person. Whereas God's parents, whose child that is, have a deep sense of commitment to their child than anybody else. Amen? Amen. Amen. So think about that. Those of you who are still going to have children, okay? You can have. Those people that have sponsors, but be careful what you call them. So, the other thing that comes up now last week is by swearing. And I don't mean uh, South African friends, I mean, <laughs> when you say, Stu's calling.